Hey, what is going on guys? It's Modded Warfare here. Welcome back to a quick update video here for the new WebKit exploit that has been released over the past couple of days. So this is coming to us first from Celeste Blue on Twitter, who says, Finally, a fast and stable WebKit exploit for PS4 system software version 6.029.60. Credits to Sergei Glazanov and Maddie Stone for discovering the vulnerability, Anonymous for writing PS3 exploit, and to myself for testing, porting, and improvements showcase on PS4 9.00. Celeste also goes on to say that this PS3 exploit will be part of Quick Hen PS4, which contains WebKit exploits for all PS4 system software versions between 3.15 and 9.60. Kernel exploits will be between 3.15 and 9.00 only and require more work. So yes, essentially this is a new WebKit exploit. As you can see here, there's a video posted of the exploit loading. It's supposedly more stable and clearly it's a lot faster at actually loading the WebKit exploit. As you can see there, the video is done in literally seven seconds. Opens the browser, runs the exploit, about two seconds and bam, it's done. So that is just the WebKit portion of the exploit. I do believe that's not chained with a kernel exploit. So the reason why I'm doing a video on this is because it's kind of blown up over the past couple of days. Normally, something like a WebKit exploit is not going to get that much attention, but this one seems to have definitely garnered a lot of attention. I think some of it is misplaced from people who seem to think that this is a new jailbreak or a new, you know, yeah, a new kernel exploit or something like that for a higher firmware, which of course it's not. This is just a WebKit exploit, which is simply a user land exploit for the PS4. Now, it also works on the PS5 from firmware 1 all the way through to 5.50. So it's also supported on the PS5. So yeah, now what this actually means, of course, it's not going to be a new jailbreak for a higher firmware unless we get a new kernel exploit. A WebKit exploit on its own isn't able to do a hell of a lot without a kernel exploit. So in terms of exploits for higher firmwares, we need to wait for a new kernel exploit. Hopefully the flow's got something cooking and we'll eventually get a kernel exploit over the next few months, maybe. But uh, until that happens, this WebKit exploit is not going to result in any new exploits for higher firmwares on the PS4 or PS5. Once we do get a new kernel exploit, then this will be able to be chained with that kernel exploit to get a jailbreak up to firmware 9.60 on the PS4 and 5.50 on the PS5, although we already have a user land exploit on the PS5 that works up to 7.61. So if a new kernel exploit came out, we would most likely be using the Blu-ray drive exploit to chain with that new kernel exploit on the PS5 so that we could potentially jailbreak higher firmwares up to 7.61, depending on what firmware the kernel exploit comes out for, of course. But I guess it is handy for digital edition PS5 consoles, because if you're on a digital edition and you're above, you know, 4.51, so you can't do the current jailbreak for the PS5, but you're on, say, 5.50 or lower, then this could potentially be chained with any new kernel exploits so that you'll be able to potentially jailbreak a digital edition console up to 5.50 once we get a new kernel exploit. So, of course, that's all stuff for the future. What about right now? What does this mean for the current state of things? Well, in terms of the PS4, there are a couple of advantages to having this. If it is as stable as it appears and as fast as... Uh, loading as it appears it could for one improve a lot of the existing exploits that we have on the ps4 so the 9.00 exploit it could make that faster and you'll run into less out of memory errors if the webkit exploit that's currently used with 9.00 gets switched out with this new one so for example typically when you load the 9.00 jailbreak you have to wait quite a bit like 10 seconds or so sometimes longer before you see the uh, the notification that pops up to plug in the USB drive, that'll still be required for this exploit because the USB drive part is part of the kernel exploit for 9.00, not the WebKit exploit. That's still going to be required. However, it could get to that stage faster using this WebKit exploit. So maybe you click it and then after only maybe one or two seconds, you get the notification to plug in the USB drive instead of having to wait 10 seconds. So that's one improvement, especially for older firmwares as well. There were some really unstable WebKit exploits used, I think, with 7.55. It was a really unstable WebKit exploit chained with a really unstable kernel exploit that made for not the best experience. So with something like that, it could be chained with this WebKit exploit to at least make the WebKit exploit portion a lot faster and more stable. Although there's not really going to be many people on 7.55 anyway when you could just update to 9.00. 
So there is that. So for existing exploits, it could make the exploit load faster with less out of memory errors with the WebKit. So that is one big advantage to having this new WebKit exploit. And the other advantage to this will be for the no Blu-ray drive updater from Lightning Mods, which is a method that Lightning Mods developed to allow you to use the current exploits to update a console that has a broken Blu-ray drive, because normally uh, consoles with broken Blu-ray drives cannot be updated. The firmware can't be updated. And Lightning Mods created the method that would allow you to update your PS4 firmware, even if your Blu-ray drive was broken, so long as you could access the the normal home menu. Unfortunately, a lot of people who have broken Blu-ray drives are stuck in safe mode and then they can't do it. But for the ones that can still get into the main uh, home screen and can still use the PS4, you can update your, your console with a broken Blu-ray drive. The issue with that is that the WebKit exploit for 9.00 only works on 9.00. It doesn't work on older firmwares like 8.50, 8.03, 8.00, even though the kernel exploit works all the way back to like 5.05 or somewhere so the yeah the xfat hack with the usb drive works all the way back multiple firmwares but because the webkit exploit only works on 9.00 the no blu-ray drive updater couldn't work on these older firmwares but with this webkit exploit working from 6.0 to 9.60 then all of those firmwares could get supported with the no blu-ray drive updater so 8.0 8.03 8.50 was there an 8.60 at some point i think there was all those firmwares could now have the no Blu-ray drive updater working so that they could update uh, their consoles to 9.00 or whatever firmware they wanted to update to. So that's an improvement there with this WebKit exploit. And of course, for the PS5, it could also potentially make loading the PS5 exploits that we currently have on 3.0 to 4.51 load a little bit faster if it's just as stable as it is on PS4 with the PS5. And also, of course, if it can be chained uh, with the kernel exploit on the PS5 because implementing WebKit exploits is, is a little bit more complicated than on PS4. So it remains to be seen if that could be done. But if that could be done, then we could also get faster loading and a more stable exploit on the PS5 as well. So that's pretty much what this does for now. Now, at the moment, it's still the early stages. I haven't really seen anybody actually chain this WebKit exploit with a full kernel exploit, any of the existing exploits on the PS4 or PS5 yet that we're still waiting for that to happen. There's going to be this quick hen that's going to be released, which essentially should be like a one-stop shop for loading the exploit on all of the supported firmwares for the PS4. So theoretically, on any supported PS4 firmware, I believe the idea is you could just load quick hen and it would automatically detect, you know, what firmware you're on and combine whatever kernel exploit is supported on your firmware with that WebKit exploit and load the, the exploit for you. So that way you wouldn't have like separate exploits for each, uh, you know, firmware. You would just have quick hen that you access and it would work no matter what firmware you were on, as long as you were on one that is supported. And of course, it should load faster with this faster WebKit exploit. So the next steps, of course, is for this to be chained with the existing exploits. And then we can really get an idea of how much of an improvement there actually is in terms of stability and loading speeds uh, with the WebKit exploit. Obviously, you know, unstable kernel exploits are still going to be just as unstable as were before this. This is only going to improve the WebKit portion of loading the exploits. So when the WebKit exploit crashes, it's the not enough free system memory error that you get. When you actually get a system crash when loading the exploit, um, or, you know, the console just turns off or whatever, that's the kernel exploit that crashes. So that's not going to be improved in terms of stability, but the actual loading of the WebKit exploit, those not enough free system memory errors, it should minimize those, you'll get less of those, and hopefully it will load faster. So anyway, just wanted to make a quick video on this because there was, seems to be a lot of hype building from this. And uh, yeah, I just wanted to kind of set the record straight on what we can realistically expect from this. So anyway, hope you enjoyed this or found the information useful. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. And once again, I'll hopefully see you guys in the next one.